you're gonna see something really cool. A storyline progress bar that's just a text variable. That's right, a text variable. So if you're not a big fan of using GSAP or percentages to display learner progress, you can still create a progress bar by just using a text variable and some vanilla JavaScript. The first thing I'm gonna do here is click on view and go to my master slide. Then I'm gonna create a text variable called SL progress bar. And I'm gonna give it a default value of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, 10 dashes. I don't have to give it a default value. I'm just doing this to estimate the size of my progress bar. Click OK here, then go to insert and insert a text box. I'm going to change the color of the font to white so I can see what I'm typing. And then I'm going to go to insert a reference to my variable. You can also do this by using the insert reference button on the insert tab. And this is how my progress bar looks now. I'm gonna increase the font so I can actually see it better and uh, give it that computer terminal green color. Yeah, perfect. Now all I need is a way for this to communicate with Storyline and see on which slide I am on compared to the total slides in the project. So I'm gonna create two new variables, one to track the current slide and one to track the total slides. And now I'm going to add some triggers to set my current slide variable to project.slide number and set my total slides variable to project.total slides. I'm doing this because I can't target built in storyline variables with JavaScript. So I'm using these to get the value of the built in variables and manipulate that value using JavaScript. Then I'm going to create an execute JavaScript trigger here after my variables are set. Inside this trigger, I'm gonna put this code. First off, we're gonna get all our storyline variables. And now I'm gonna declare a new variable called progress. And to calculate this, I'm gonna divide the current slide by the total slides, then multiply by 10, then floor the value. So what this means that if I'm on slide seven out of 15, for example, 7 divided by 15 is 0 0.46. Multiplied by 10, that's 4.6. Now, because we are flooring this value, which means we're approximating down to the nearest integer, that will result in 4. So the progress will be equal to 4. So that means our progress bar will be 40% full, which means that I will have four dashes here. According to this next line, this line will basically create a text string that will repeat this character for a progress number of times. In our case, it will repeat this dash four times because progress is four. That's why I will have four dashes in my progress bar. And the last line here is us pushing the variable back into storyline so it can be displayed. I created 10 identical slides here in my scene, all using the same master. If I publish now, my progress bar will look like this. It's honestly beautiful. I'm clicking next, I'm clicking back. Everything is working perfectly. Amazing. But wait, there's more. I can have any text character I want in here. It doesn't have to be a dash. Look at this example. My progress bar starts filled with zeros and now instead of a dash, I have the number one. So when we make progress, the zeros are replaced with ones. And if I go back, the ones are replaced with zeros. And this is how I did it. So I'm repeating the one for progress number of times. And I'm also repeating zero at the end of the string for 10 minus progress number of times. So if I'm on slide one out of 10, my string will be a one and nine zeros. How about this one? You're not limited to one character. You can repeat as many characters as you like. Look at this. The only thing to add about this is that you can control how it looks by changing the font. Look at this one, for example. This gives off the illusion of the progress bar being a single line. You have many options, to be honest. The most important thing is that your text box doesn't resize. 
So to avoid that, you can go to Format Shape and make sure the text shrinks on overflow. And that's it. Look at how simple this is to implement. <laughs> this is actually amazing. And the effect is really nice. Thank you for watching.